Okay, the thing about diversity here is it's just not present. <laughs> um, admissions relies on the same geographical areas to pull in students, and when they pull students in and bring them the hope, the students go through a culture shock where they're the only person of color in the classroom or there isn't any representation of staff and faculty. Um, so then students just leave. Um, and what's worse is diversity and inclusion should be a whole campus matter. And we rely on the CDI, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, because some people don't even know that name, um, to do all the heavy work. Um, diversity hope is a lot of things. So we could be talking about race, we could be talking about gender, we could be talking about sexuality. Um, diversity means difference, and some of those differences are more apparent than others. Diversity at Hope is important. I think being in an institution, especially a higher ed institution, um, it's important that we're exposed to people who think differently than us, people from different backgrounds, people of different races, and people of different genders. Oh, non-existent. Currently, I'd say there is little to no diversity at Hope. Hope is still majority white. There is um, a lot of white conservative students. I think diversity at Hope is actually broader than that um, because I would really like us to be reaching those who have able-bodied diversity, um, those who are um, people who feel any kind of difference. Um, they don't feel like they're being welcomed by everyone else. Diversity at Hope is the, tech, the token black friend. There's not really any diversity here at Hope and that is a big problem because it's such a shock for a lot of students and it's hard for them to succeed here. Struggling. Struggling. Yeah. Um, scarce. Um, at times threatened. Us being diverse, it requires us to limit who we really are and to limit um, um, our power and our culture to assimilate to the white man and to assimilate to this college. So I think that hope is not diverse. In recent years, there has been a massive push for diversity and representation in mainstream media and pop culture. From Crazy Rich Asians to Black Panther, Moonlight to Call Me By Your Name, minority groups are stepping up and speaking out. Celebrities and athletes are taking a stance and putting social justice issues of the American people on a more visible platform. Major movements like Black Lives Matter have amplified the voices of the voiceless. Diversity is no longer an option. It is a requirement and an expectation everywhere, especially on college campuses. In our very own backyard, voices are getting louder, concerns are being raised, and the demographics of our campus are changing every year. So, what is Hope doing to keep up with the world around it? I met with members of faculty, staff, and administration to figure out what we are doing and where we are going as a campus. Dean of Students, Richard Frost, shared with me anecdotes about his time abroad that strengthened his passion for increasing diversity and inclusion efforts at Hope. When asked about what the institution actively does to champion diversity, he explained the goal of Hope's strategic plan. Hope for the World 2025 is comprised of six goals, academics, Christian formation, global engagement, community, reputation and influence, and value. Goal four ensures that hope as a community will be unified by its inspiring mission, strengthened by its diversity, and committed to the flourishing of every individual as one created and loved by God. While this is a stated goal for Hope College, do minority students feel this is a priority for the institution? Goal four, Hope College will be a community unified by its inspiring mission, strengthened by its diversity, and committed to the flourishing of every individual as one created and loved by God. Objective one, faculty, staff, students, and trustees will be a living slash learning community characterized by respectful understanding of commonalities and differences informed by our Christian mission. Objective two, Recruitment, retention, and vendor strategies will employ best practices in developing a diverse and inclusive community. Objective three, assess, address, and promote a campus culture where each person can flourish. And that's it. I think something so, oh sorry. I think something so interesting about this objective is the idea of like a living and learning community where you're sharing commonalities. Because I think I found those communities that hope 
but the hope community is not that way like mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. feel at yeah. home as a hope student mm -hmm. i feel at home in club oh, yeah. scholars mm -hmm. i feel at home with my friends yeah. i feel at home you know in my departments to a certain extent but i would never say i feel comfortable as a hope student because the majority of hope students i know aren't interested about learning in me other than the fact that they want to have a diverse friend like mm -hmm. they don't actually care about my experience and when you start to criticize the school that they love because they are impressed by it, they get upset. Mm -hmm. You can love something and criticize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, like we really don't go over like in depth into other people's cultures and classes and stuff like that. You know, like even like the people who are actually in our class, you know, that's um, surprising to me sometimes because things can be like, it, there's like, they could be more applicable sometimes when we talk about everybody else too, you know, like. Mm -hmm. And then it's like almost avoided. <laughs> yeah. Like how often in cultural heritage classes do you see us talking about like European history? You know, and Norwegian history and Dutch history. Yeah. But what about like, you know, what about Aztec poetry? What about, you know, all of these other, you know, parts of the world that we don't really talk about? I mean, the global, the, what is it, the global learning requirement things that we all got from Phelps Scholars, but everybody else on this campus, those those global learning requirements are an absolute joke. Mm -hmm. Like you can mm -hmm. take a class about an Irish person who once talked to somebody who was Mexican and they'll be like, <laughs> good. 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 you've done it, that's it, you're good, you're good to go, you know everything you need to know. Like, I'm in engineering, so like I'm pretty much most of the time the only female and the only black female in my classes. So a mm -hmm. lot of the times when I'm doing my classes, I have to work with all white male students. And like they so easily ignore me to the point that I have to like be extra loud and like extra present to get them to even notice right. me. Mm -hmm. And so then um, I got invited. About that. Yeah. yeah. And so I got invited to talk to like a bunch of new professors on campus like at the beginning of the year. And like, I told them my story how like I'm in math class and like I'm trying to go over a project for math and nobody else is listening to me. And so I have to like literally make my presence known. And I was like the teacher would have just noticed that and actually mm -hmm. like advocated for me and forced them to listen to me, it would have made my job a lot easier too. It made me happier to like be a part of that group. And so like they were all like, oh, no, that doesn't happen. I'm like, it does happen. Yeah. And so then when I also confront all my other classmates about it, they're like, but you know we wouldn't do that. Okay, no, like literally you grow up in a society where you see me as a black woman and like your first instinct is to totally act like I don't exist because that's just how you've been conditioned. And like, I know that's how you've been conditioned. So when I confront you about it, you don't know how to deal with it. And so when I confront my teachers about it, they don't know how to deal with it. I confront the department people about it, they don't know how to deal with it. Mm. So that's the thing, it's like no one knows how to deal with diversity and inclusion, but they want it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's not just the students that have these, like, attitudes towards us. You know, it's no. the professors, it's the faculty. Like, when we're, at, when we're at work, like, when I'm sitting at work and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in an office and we start talking about something, like, culturally, like some kind of cultural subject and all of a sudden they're like asking me about my culture and all of a sudden everybody's saying hola in the office but they don't actually ask me about my culture like about the right. things that I care about my culture right. you know, they're asking about like do you guys eat tamales on Christmas and it's like you know that we do so I don't know why you're asking that <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, it's hard to retain first-generation students because they don't have the resource or support back home mm -hmm. that um, most of us do um, but I feel that for um, first generation students, Hope has been trying to reach out and create these uh, retention plans that do work. However, um, when it comes to student body uh, and you feel intimidated and you also feel um, that you are not a loud voice on campus and you can't find um, because he, like it's it's kind of hard having to look for a first generation community when there's only like one or two and if you don't fit into those two you feel like you know you can't you're not comfortable yeah and i think that, i think that has a lot to do with the way that we talk about that for instance because there are a lot of first generation students like both like of other cultures and not you know at hope and because like you know, they cater to that too, I think. Like, they give us a good package when we're first generation, you know? Um, but not being able to reach out to people like that or, like, not having that kind of confidence because Hope doesn't give us that kind of confidence. It's a very privileged... It's like, there's that community and then there's a very privileged, like, society, like, that lives on campus.
When discussing topics of diversity at Hope, as the director for the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, Associate Dean Vanessa Green is a vocal leader in these conversations. When meeting with Ms. Green, she discussed a variety of programs being greenlit by HOPE in an effort to make the institution more affordable for minority students, as well as initiatives that would benefit them upon their graduation. Financial aid plays a role in the lives of many students, but some do not realize socioeconomic status can contribute to the struggles of maintaining a diverse demographic on campus. Yeah, and I, like what I know is that like for a lot of students of color, a lot of international students, they got us by the balls, man, because it's like, be, because of financial aid packages or no. awards, no, that's what you it can't is. come yeah. up to them and exactly. say, hey, yeah. what about right, exactly. us? They're saying, well, we're paying You're for your education. Yeah. Yeah. They know that. However, it's the like thing is that, okay. right, it's like, you're paying yeah. for our education, however, you are taking our voice away. And I think like, it's like you have to always pay some kind of exchange. price for a little right. bit of freedom. Right. It's, right. it's a financial, you know? like, it's it, like a financial mm -hmm. abuse. And they like, know we can't it. leave. Like, that's part of the reason why they they, know, they, yeah. they bring us in is because, like, if I don't have the finances and you're giving me all this money, I can't leave just like that. I don't, I'm a first generation college student. Like, my parents, neither one of my parents even finished high school. Like, my options are limited. Yeah. They're, they're so focused on recruitment. They're not where, they're not paying any type of attention to retention. Right. Because I can count, I need multiple people, all of their hands, to count how many people are still here of color from my junior year. Right. How many How many people do we know that? Uh, how many of our friends have left? How many of our yep. friends have because left? Because yep. they experience what you've experienced right. where they're in a class, especially in the math and sciences, and they're completely ignored. Yeah. Right. They go into Phelps or Cook and they see all these tables filled with yeah. white students and they know they can't go sit down. And the fact that we've had how many conversations since our first semester freshman year, I a countless number of wondering if hope is for me, if I should leave, if it it is worth it to be here. Mm -hmm. No. And like the thing and is, you have to like go and intentionally one, seek one the help that you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like when you get there, they'll help you. But the thing is, you have to go intentionally seek it. And like yes. I've run into numerous, so numerous so times where like I didn't do well on an exam, or like I didn't do well on a test, or like I just wasn't ready for like something that happened in the class. And I was like, oh my god, this is so hard. And someone was like, well, why are you studying engineering then if it's hard? And so the thing is, I think it's like you yeah. have another fellow student say that to you is not easy to like hear, and it's kind of like, well, can I not struggle? And so I think the biggest thing is like, oh. okay, yeah, like the, you have the donors, the professors, administration; those are important, but screw them. Like I have to deal with my peers every single day. Right. Yeah. Until we change right their language and their thought process, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is like until the administration, like, and until the teachers and professors, like make other make the majority white male and female students on this campus accountable for how they treat their yes. fellow peers and like the, yeah. the language that they, they like have that give us the thing is yeah they yeah. have that authority until they do that until they change it until they force them to start respecting us in our classes it's not going to be easy because like my professors are super like super super like helpful and super like accommodating like mm -hmm. some of the best people on this campus to me and like they're all yeah. white they're all white engineers mm -hmm. like you wouldn't expect that they're some yeah. of the best professors on this campus mm -hmm. that I've run into and the thing is that the thing is that they don't force my fellow male and female counterparts to respect me in the classrooms. Yeah. And they see yeah. the disrespect, they hear it. Mm -hmm. They even like look shook sometimes when a student says something to me, but they will not tackle it. Because they don't know how to handle themselves. And they're, themselves. they're scared, they're, they're scared to, to like force these it. little yeah. bratty ass boys <laughs> who <laughs> grow up with fathers that are lawyers and who own uh -huh. boats to like actually respect me. My dad owns a boat, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> my dad didn't go to college just because my mom had to stay home to go to college if she had me doesn't mean that I don't deserve the same respect as you mm -hmm. I don't come from like this because my family can't access the same wealth that you can doesn't mean I can't afford an iPhone ho like that's just how it is <laughs> it's like I really wish like like they would just force them to accept and like so when I jump in a conversation I'm like yeah my dad has a boat don't be like huh like be like oh cool well can I come on no bitch but you don't still <laughs> reading off of this objective it's pure bullshit. Right. It's pure bullshit. Right. It's pure yeah. bullshit. And you're talking about how peers, yeah. like your peers, aren't there for you, and mm -hmm. but the, the professors and the administration right. don't. It's anybody a whole thing. Yeah. Right. They all it's have to be in on it. Yeah. Yeah. But white allyship on this campus is dead. fucking abysmal. It's, it's dead. It's Wait, dead. it's not there. It's like the they're scene. on your side. Yeah. Like really, they want to use you and manipulate mm -hmm. you for their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There are things that do um do not go past me, like a lot of the funding that should be going into the growth of the community, uh, like maybe Campus parking, 
Six oh, million dollar campus. Maybe about that building. Right. Yeah, let's talk about that ten million, million dollar building that's behind us right now. Plus taxes <laughs> for a campus ministry, and I don't want to like shit on campus ministry. I, However, I do. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't have thousands of majors or hundreds of majors. Yeah, they probably got just, twenty, and I know all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's if that. If that. <laughs> and like, I know yeah. donors. Um, you know. And Hope College has to accept donations um, from people that want to help. However, they should help. Um, Hope College should help and reach out to those donors. Be like, we don't really need this right now. What no. we're focused on is on the growth and on implementing these action plans. Yeah. Because as a college, we want to grow. They come in here right. with, and feel uncomfortable sometimes because there's white students in here yeah. who I've never seen come to a Center for Diversity. Mm -hmm. and yeah, right. black and we're union, promised you know, Lat that, Latino oh, student organization. eventually, like, let's just try this out. Let's try this out first, and then and then we'll move you to a bigger It's like we're place. an experiment. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you guys have a great point. Like, the size of this room in comparison, like, for instance, if there is a study room this size, like, like there are on the other, like, on the mm -hmm. other side of the hallway, how many students actually sit in that study room? Right. Like four. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like four students. So if they did like the studies to say, okay, we have about like let's go fifty um, uh, students of color that are definitely going to be coming to this room on a weekly basis. You're not going to fit fifty. Then why did here. they pick this room? You right. know, like that. That's kind You're of. You're not going to fit fifty people here. It's one of those things that makes me question. You know, like I I've noticed like when we do just like mm -hmm. this kind of meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Right. The world, like we can't even like we're sitting here and there's already a wall there, you know, like. But like you know? freshman year, after the election, we were directly threatened. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were told to our face, yes. "We're coming for you tonight. You guys better lock your doors in Scott Hall." Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were told that directly to our fucking faces. Mm -hmm. And what happened? One campus safety officer. One. One. Had to sleep over. One. Not even sleep over, but spend the night, right? Yeah. Yeah. One. Because that's how much. Because they don't care. They don't care about us. They don't. And that's the part that just gets me because they love to talk about. But then they got us far They involved. love. We can't leave. They love to put so much lip service mm -hmm. on a diverse and inclusive community and pictures and, yeah. and yeah. flourishing. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 they're not doing they anything concrete. The they're not doing anything to fix the fucking roots of the goddamn problem. Mm -hmm. They're putting band aids. And then like. Uh, that just made me think about what happened to Carissa last year before she left where she was giving a presentation. Um, I think it was a, her research that she had been working on for the year and during the presentation they had some people from like the Holland community and this white man from the Holland community got up and told her that she was stupid, all black people are stupid. We could never, um, I think, become intelligent nor like be intelligent because we were bred to be stupid, like referring to like slavery and everything. And that was her last presentation here at Hope. She was a senior, she was leaving. Like, to have that be your last experience in this place where you've already had so many negative experiences. Right. You know, and then I don't know what, what kind of actions were done after that. That's always what we say, like, we know these things are happening, but what, right. what's taking place afterwards? How are they following up? How are they supporting students? How are they? Um, giving consequences to these actions yeah. of racism and not and just students, faculty too, and all these other yeah. things that are happening on campus, and it's just like, man, like you expect me to come back? You yeah. want me to help you guys out when I leave? So freshman year, I had my first real experience on this campus of like how horrible it can be and how much they don't like really care. Mm -hmm. So I was walking down the street, going to go meet a friend for coffee, and all of a sudden a pickup truck came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and like it was a red light, and it was my turn across the street. Truck came. He saw me, he revved his engine and came after me, tried to hit me. I got hit and was thrown off to the side. Nobody came and picked me up, by the way. I had to pick my own self up. Um, I was so nervous, I didn't know what happened. I thought maybe it was my fault. Did I, did I not cross the street right? But it didn't seem like I know how to cross the street. I'm 19, I can cross the street on my own, right? I was just like so shook, I didn't know how to deal with it. Like, this is my first semester. And like, I just called my mom and like, my, she calls my dad and they're like, we need to ride up there. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, I'm really scared. Like, I'm shaking. I'm in the middle of a coffee shop shaking right now. I don't know what's going on. It's like, eventually, it, it, it's like, no, this was a hate crime. Like, someone really tried to kill me. Um, and like, I remember a little bit of the license plate. So like, I, I didn't want to report it. I just didn't know what to do with it. So eventually, Ernesto, I told him the situation because I was like, my side is hurting really bad. I might need to go to the hospital because they might have like punctured something. So I didn't get my ribs wrapped. And it was like just a really scary experience. So I reported it. Um, 
By the way, no campus safety officer came to get my report. I reported it and Ernesto sent it in, but no one came to follow up afterwards except for Ernesto and Miss Vanessa Green, of course. Um, then they started to figure out it might have been a student or it might have been a parent of a student that had purposely came after me. I was targeted. There was a student on campus who told their parents about me and targeted me. Um, they wanted me gone. They wanted me to get hit. Um, and no one did anything about it. And so like to this day still, I have no report, nothing has been followed up. All I know lastly was they think they had the person I don't know to this day, nothing. And like at this point, me and my parents have told me to forget about it. I have never cried. I don't cry. I'm no, just like, I'm not really an emotional person. Um, but I cried, I bawled my eyes out. And my roommate, she's white, she didn't know what to do. She, Cause and then I told, I was telling other people about it cause like I needed an emotional reach. I didn't know like how to deal with it. People were like, maybe you crossed the street wrong. And it was like, yeah, yeah. this yeah, was their was answer good. to the situation. Yeah. And like, the thing it's is like, ridiculous. so when a student's life is actually put on the line, not just their mental health, defend. but their physical health, right. mm -hmm. they, they get shaken. Like I saw administration on this campus that my story was brought to, they like were open mouthed and they did, they were like, couldn't give me an answer what to do they about never, it. They were because like, it did you them, report it? Everyone's answer was, answer. well, you reported it, right? I was just like, how many more times can I report this <laughs> before, like, this per, because I, I was really yeah, nervous. Like, I really yeah. thought this person was going to target me again. I was like, yeah. I can't cross the street. So, like, I was forcing my friends to cross the street with me, go off campus, because I was nervous that I was going to be targeted again, and the same pickup truck was going to come after me. Now I have a fear of great pickup trucks. It's just like how it is. I'm nervous all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, when a student's physical, like, Health is put on the when line. Your life yeah. is they put can't. On the line, they yeah. don't. They get shaken, especially a student of color. Mm -hmm. A white student. Oh, let's help you. Let's, let's hug you. Let's protect you. Me. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a second. Uh... As minority students, we experience the campus and the world as a whole differently than our peers. The diversity and inclusion that Hope is striving for is a long-awaited effort to make our daily reality a safer experience, to give us the space we deserve to be our authentic selves to level the playing field and provide equitable opportunities, to give us freedom to be students first, not activists. We are a far stretch from satisfactory, but it is these stories, thoughts, and experiences that are going to propel this institution to the standards it has set for itself. Our silence will stifle the greatness our college has to offer. We are not just the stones the builder refused. We are the very foundation of our nations. If we do not speak, the world will not listen. We will speak, we will scream, we will fight until we are heard.